Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So, guys, we have more and more quote-unquote disclosure. Uh, here we see aliens exist, and they could already be on Earth. So says the first British astronaut. Dr. Helen Sharman says uh, there's no two ways about it. Of course they exist. It would be crazy to think that they don't exist because, you know, look at all the stars out there. And now we know that there is water abundantly and that the chances of life are, well, uh, it, it's a given. It's truly a given. Really what we have to do is recognize that our Western mind has been erased in so many ways and conditioned. Really it goes back to the church and it goes back to the beliefs that the church put out there. The church erased uh, all the references to reincarnation in any of the scriptures and recognized that there was over 200 gospels, gospels, and we have four. There was a thousand or more different manuscripts in circulation in the early churches, quote unquote, uh, real. We shouldn't even really use that term, it just um, circulating amongst the early Christians. And in many different types of Christianity that was developing, a whole different set of beliefs were there as opposed to what became the official doctrine back at 325 AD in the Council of Nicaea by Constantine the Great, who was basically uh, a Roman emperor who was, you know, such a nice guy, he put to death his, his own son and his own wife in order to secure his empire. And this is the man that founded, really, the Catholic Church. And out of the Catholic Church comes really so much of our Western view on things. And so the existence of extraterrestrials, interdimensionals, has been wiped clean from the Western mind for a long time. Yet the evidence is absolutely overwhelming that we have always been visited. They have always been here. And now we have more and more uh, very intelligent people coming right out there and making the statement that is honestly very obvious to those of us that have been researching this for a very long time. And so yet another comes out. You know, there was quite a few astronauts on the American side that have acknowledged the same thing. Come straight out and said, yeah, well, we were up there and they were there. And yet many people don't think we could even leave the planet because of the Van Allen belts. But, you know, recognize the technology that exists with civilizations that might be millions of years ahead of us. So here we see aliens exist, but we're not open-minded enough to see them. And this is because of our conditioning. And, you know, many aliens don't look hardly anything different than us, according to everything we've seen from every culture really on the planet, every tradition, every people, every race, every creed, every color. There's just countless stories and legends that, you know, if you talk to these people, they're passed down as if this is, you know, not a myth. This is a reality. There are beings that live inside the earth. There are beings that fly up in the sky. So we have been conditioned to not see them. And it's amazing what people don't see. It really is. Uh, we have been conditioned to not see, and, and that's in so many ways part of the matrix that is totally enveloping our consciousness, although we are breaking out of that and waking up. Here is a selective attention test, and, and I ask you guys, if you're interested, go ahead, click it. You might not see the gorilla in the room, and that's, again, the case of what is going on here. It's a matter of distraction, right? You know, distract, get people looking in a different direction, thinking something totally, totally different from the reality. And so, you know, we just keep seeing more and more disclosure going on because they can't keep it under wraps. If we study all the traditions of the world, many of them come right out there, actually the vast majority, if not all, really, when you dig down deep, come right out there and say that we're not alone, we've never been alone. They've always been here. Gigantic triangular UFO spotted above Texas days after a New York sighting. Now, to me, this is uh, definitely part of our space program, which, you know, Trump has said he needs a space force. Well, they already have one. It's been around a long time. And, uh, 
you know, we've seen a lot of declassified documents talking about the Nazis, the fact that they had this anti-gravity tech way back in the 40s, and we saw UFOs buzz DC, which was real. And also, again, in my opinion, that was part of the Nazis again. And we talked about Operation Paperclip and others and all the uh, top brains coming into the United States, into the United States uh, secret programs to develop this tech. And so, you know, the TR-3B, many people are aware of that. And, you know, here's yet another sighting. I saw one of these myself only about 300 feet, I would say, over my head. Uh, back around 2000 and it was at the beach in Milford, Connecticut and it was about like what we're seeing here. It was uh, dusk, just getting dark and it was hovering silently just, well, not really hovering, it was moving at I'd say 5 to 10 miles an hour, super slow and it had a beam of red light that would shoot from the center every so often and uh, interestingly enough, somebody reported seeing uh, a red orb or something come out of it in this case. So these, I think, are ours. You know, anything you see triangular like that is ours. Uh, as far as the classic disc shape, it could be ours too. Or it might be uh, inhabited by some grays. Or it might be a drone as well. Astronomers have tracked a repeating radio signal across space to an unexpected origin. And so now they're starting to let out the fact that they're getting a lot of signals. Yeah, it's there are a lot of signals out there that we don't know what they are. Uh, you know, maybe it's some new type of star that we just don't understand. Yeah, or maybe it's just, you know, somebody else communicating out there. Because <laughs> the space is very much inhabited. And how the CIA tried to quell UFO panic during the Cold War and what this boils down to is the fact that what the CIA feared the most was the, the people. And so they felt that the people could not handle the truth. You can't handle the truth, so we're going to make the decisions for you and not tell you the truth is really what, what this all boils down to. You know, we would just basically go crazy. People would be running in the streets. Uh, many think that Orson Welles, with his broadcast of War of the Worlds, was sort of a test run. Let's see how they can handle it. You know, and then we could just always say, oh, that was just a play. That was just a radio play, a radio show. That's all. You know, but they didn't say that really uh, repeatedly through the program. So many people thought this was real and people actually were jumping off of bridges. They couldn't handle the truth. I think now in our modern society, we'll be able to handle it. I think it's still going to make some people just run to the john, and uh, other people are going to have to just bring a couple, you know, pair of pants with them. Uh, it's And some people, it's, it's just going to shatter their whole sense of reality because they'll realize that their view of the world, of the universe, is wrong, and it's been wrong the whole time, and that's going to shatter paradigms. And it's going to instantaneously change our consciousness. However, if you talk to Native Americans, if you talk to uh, Zulu shamans, if you talk to Australian Aboriginals, if you talk to the natives down in the rainforest, if you most definitely talk to people that understand the Vedas, the Puranas, the Mahabharata, yeah, you know, they've always been here, of course. There was the wars of the gods here. As we see, 194 UFO sightings reported in Washington State last year. That was like more than double. Uh, and over here, over nearly 100 UFO sightings reported in Idaho. So UFO sightings are going through the roof right now. And here we see space journeys in ancient India with the Vamanas, which is so fascinating. And ancient sages freely moved from earth to far off planets like Brahma Loka. So Loka means world. And so we see a lot of different Lokas out there. When we start studying uh, the Hindu holy, holy texts, and so they acknowledge that there's a lot of different worlds. And in fact, in the Mahabharata and in the Ramayana as well, a lot of the antagonists are not human. They're humanoid, but they're not from here. They came here and, and imposed their will on us. And the protagonists, the good guys, 
the uh, devas, they tried to defend us and to keep this from happening. So, you know, they end up being looked at as angels and demons, but they're beings. They're, they are beings. Some benevolent, some malevolent. And it's acknowledged openly that this is the case. It's acknowledged so openly and humans saw them flying around in the sky and shooting at each other and sometimes blowing each other up with what could only be described as something that, as powerful as a nuclear uh, device. And, you know, these are just epic <laughs> accounts of this war that might still be going on. And perhaps we unknowingly are right in the middle of this war. And we don't even realize that we are in the middle of what is truly a galactic war. And a war that might actually extend beyond just this 3D reality. This is perhaps a interdimensional galactic war that has been going on perhaps for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or maybe even millions of years. Does that boggle your mind or not? Well, you know, when we look at these texts, that's what exactly what they are saying. It's, it's amazing. And plus, the knowledge that they had is mind-blowing. They knew from these scriptures, it, well, their science back then agrees with some of our science now as far as the aging of things. And so when we talk about Homo sapiens sapiens, perhaps we've been so deceived. Maybe all those little... Uh, dead ends, so to speak, like Australopithecus, Ramapithecus, uh, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, you know, maybe they really didn't have much to do with us. And uh, as well, there are many uncovered beings and the universe, according to the Vedas and the Puranas and the Mahabharata, is one in which there are all sorts of different beings, hundreds of thousands of humanoid beings, as well as other species that don't look like uh, <laughs> humans at all out there, and inhabiting planets around different stars and different systems. It's just a given. This was known. This was fact. So, you know, it's just, it's just amazing how open, out in the open it was, and yet, it's really the Western world that rules things, the Western mind that rules things. And that is exactly why we don't understand all these things. Because in the West, it's all been turned into angels and, and demons. And also, something not to be delved into, not to be questioned. Here you see the locas, the planets of advanced aliens, and, you know, there is an ultimate creator of all this. And that is well known as well. Uh, you know, and that ultimate source is something that, uh, as the Tao says, is kind of unknowable. And it's exactly like what the true meaning of Shiva is. It's, it's you know, that which is not. <laughs> because it's not yet formed. You know, it, it has not come into being. And so... There is most definitely a creator of the gods as well. And many of these gods, quote unquote, uh, we should call them more devas, or we could just simply call them other beings, other intelligent beings. They taught us. And this is, this is basically what is called uh, the eternal truth, the fact that source lies within all of us and all beings. But the dark side doesn't want us to know that. The dark side wants us to be subservient. And so these beings that we call uh, demons, or in, if we're looking at the Hindu books, uh, often they're called asuras. And asura is a one term. And some asuras can be relatively, well, not as evil as others, we could say. Uh, and it, it, it's basically everything has been shifted to such a degree so that we don't know that we've never been alone because they want us to know. The Truman Show, that's what they want. They want to keep you in the Truman Show so you realize that you are not, that you are, they don't want you realizing that you're being watched all the time and that your reality is, the matrix is formed around you to keep you asleep 
And so something like the Truman Show is really our reality. Or if you guys um, remember Dark City, uh, where everybody, you know, is always, it's always dark. It's always dark. And there's these strange beings out there that everybody's kind of fearful of that can almost, they, they can stop time, stop everything and change things just to run their tests on what exactly is the human soul. You know, what are humans? Because they, they were missing what we had in that movie. And ultimately, it turns out that the humans are not on this planet at all, but they were actually in a on a spaceship that was flat, coincidentally. <laughs> but everything is created by the uh, the ultimate source and that's that's a given as well and that's understood uh, in these systems fascinating fascinating stuff and when we look over here and uh, we see information from the Zulu shaman Kredo Mutwa on the origins and future of humanity and so you know this is coming out of Africa and it's just well known again that there's all different types of beings involved with humanity there's extraterrestrials uh, one group is called the chitali and they walk gracefully quote unquote probably because of the waviness of their body due to the weight of their tail they're tall with large heads sometimes horns all around for the warrior type and there's other types as well that are mentioned, including ones that are quite obviously reptilian. And there are uh, reptilian-like and snake-like beings in every single culture on this planet. And they will tell you that they live inside the planet. And many tribes will tell you that ultimately we come from the stars. And so, yeah, this is fascinating stuff. And that's Kredo Mutwa. He talks about the fall of Atlantis and, and ritual sacrifices and all that because these darker entities, uh, they are into blood sacrifices. They are into blood sacrifices where the beings of light are not into blood sacrifices. And, you know, in Hinduism, for instance, uh, vegetarian uh, life is something that most embrace because they, they don't want to kill the animals because they recognize the animals have a higher consciousness, um, a little bit more advanced state of being. But always you give thanks for, for what you do receive. And this is going into Kredo Mutwa and the alien agenda. UFOs and alien abductions. There's been all sorts of genetic experiments. It's almost like Earth is basically a zoo. And there are a lot of different beings that are involved in this. And each has its own agenda. Each group has its own agenda. And so that's part of, you know, this whole bigger picture. This world is ruled by these, ultimately. Uh, John Mack was one of the top uh, UFO researchers in the West as well. And he did also interview Mutwa. Uh, you know, there have been so many politicians that have come out and just spoken about this reality so it's something that we should you know prepare ourselves for and i know there are people out there that that just can't comprehend anything other than they're all angels and demons even though you know when the, the word demon comes from daemon which is greek which means like nature spirits and the word you know angel means messenger so it's really the concept that has been sold to the populace, which is erroneous, totally. And it, it, it lacks the depth and expanse of knowledge, and it really lacks understanding. And we see all the evidence going back thousands of years, reptilian-looking entities found in Iraq, and, and this is 5,000 to 4,500 BC, you know, so this, this is over 7,000 years ago. And way before any sort of Abrahamic scripture ever came into being, we know that the story of Noah is just, it's basically taken from Utpatnisham. It's taken from a Babylonian story, which is thousands of years older. It, it's just a rehashing of an old story out of Sumeria that vastly predates it. And so many of the Old Testament uh, stories are that exactly. They are just condensed Reader's Digest versions of much larger 
uh, stories that are far more ancient as well. So the whole concept has been used to limit the mindset of the Western uh, Western human uh, because, you know, obviously we are all living in America, to quote Rammstein. And America dominates the globe and the American way dominates the globe. And again, this is the this is the way of the corporations, which is the way of the bloodlines, which, you know, believe themselves to be those who inherited this planet from the quote unquote gods because they are the ones that are the pure bloods, the blue bloods. There's a reason why it's blue bloods. You know, there's so much here that just intertwines so obviously uh, that the evidence is incredibly overwhelming and yes i realize it totally shocks some people that just can't handle it but you know that's the minority most people can handle it as we see you know it's just place after place everywhere we look at you know that's certainly okay is that the tin man from the wizard of oz or is that somebody in some sort of space suit well that's six thousand years old uh everywhere we look every corner of the globe overwhelming evidence you know, look at those saucers dropping stuff. Look at this ship up in the clouds from 1479. It's a woodcutting from Arabia. All sorts of unusual beings, celestial chariots. Look at this in Japan. These guys have got like guns. They're aiming down and shooting at the uh, antelope running around there. Meanwhile, humans on the ground are using spheres. All oh, these guys are flying around and they're flying saucers and just taking pot shots. You know, come on. We just got to wake up now and admit that uh, this universe is far more expansive. There's a lot more life here than most would want to admit. And, you know, we have to adjust to it. And here we see a former NASA astronaut claims the Pope knows aliens exist. Of course, the Catholic Church knows the whole thing. It's the richest uh, entity, uh, you know, private entity on the planet. And they have hoarded all the things, all the evidence, them and the Smithsonian, uh, that would lead to us understanding the history of this planet, the fact that we're not alone. So Edgar Mitchell, right, six man to, to walk on the moon, allegedly said extraterrestrials want to help us to get free energy. So, and looking at the rest of this, all right, former NASA astronaut claims the Pope knows aliens exist and wants to help humans, but space war is imminent. The war was here in the past. We we If we look at the... Hindu holy books, it gets into big detail. Star Wars is based on all this, but it's also kind of given us a clue to the bigger reality. And mankind finds themselves in the midst of a war that's been going on for millennia. And perhaps, you know, the second coming, uh, so to speak, you know, is, it can be taken to many different levels because as we said before, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So that's all about consciousness. Uh, but again, when, when I was, you know, deep into Bible study, and I was about 19 years old, 19, 20 years old, it hit me, uh, you know, this would all make perfect sense with the day of the Lord and everything, if it really is ETs, and it is like a space war that's going on. And that's when everything just kind of falls totally into place, as we see the Pope with one of his buddies there. Yeah. <laughs> So there are definitely different groups. Now, I don't trust the powers that be, so I would tend to think that the ones that are ruling this world would portray uh, the benevolent as malevolent and the malevolent as benevolent. Everything is upside down in this world. And, you know, of course, we had Reagan hinting about, you know, if, if we all knew that there was an outside force of aliens coming to, you know, yeah. And Space Force, it's been there the whole time, but now they're building it up. So many people believe that, and again, there's there's truth, but then there's not all the truth. And there's just enough truth that you, you could say it's truth. And there's enough, you know, of the uh, BS in there to get us thinking down the wrong path. And they get us throwing the baby out with the bathwater time and time again. So a lot of people are expecting Project Blue Beam, Fake alien invasion, install the one world government, mark of the beast. You know, you're going to literally take a chip in the hand or on the forehead 
you know, we know all that. That's also obviously easily seen, taking things literally out of the book of Revelation. But recognize, too, you know, there's a lot of depth to things. Like when we're talking about uh, the seven lampstands and the seven cities, and we, you know, we're referencing the chakras there. We're talking about kundalini. We're talking about enlightenment. So there's all this different depths to what is in there. And perhaps I haven't said that enough times. It's a lot of times, you know, when you've got so much of this stuff down because you've been doing it for all your life, like 40 years plus, uh, you just get to the point where you think everybody knows this stuff. You know, it's just obvious. I mean, there's, there's, I understand the literalist, fundamentalist point of view. And uh, at one time, I wouldn't say I ever believed it, honestly. Um, but, you know, I was considering it more and, and, you know, trying to see if I could make it work. And no, it doesn't work. And it's, it's just, you know, after going too far in, studying all the different cultures, it doesn't work. You know, so that's where I'm at now. And, uh, you know, I just keep going. And now, you know, exploring deeper and deeper and deeper, especially the, uh, the ancient uh, Vedic knowledge, because it's, it's just mind-blowing how straight out there it all is. And I've shown some of these t things to you in the past. Check out this, guys. You know, this is 1871, really interesting year. The Great Chicago Fire with a UFO beaming down a laser beam. And so what's going on there? Did Mrs. O'Leary's cow not cause the Chicago Fire? Well, what did then? There was reports of UFOs and people seeing beams of light and then seeing fires uh, popping up. Now, the other thing is, too, there's inner earth civilizations, which I totally believe are real. And, uh, you know, a lot of the people that perhaps survived Atlantis and Lemuria went inside and still maintain their technology. Talking to David Dubine, he's very open to that. And actually, it feels like he and David Dubine from ADAPT uh, 2030... It feels like that is what he is thinking is the most likely thing at the moment. And we get into that in the interview I did with him a couple of days ago that with uh, will be posted on ADAPT 2030 uh, and probably in a week or two. He will, he will let us know. Um, but it was a good two and a half hours. It was really interesting stuff. So what do you make of that? And then, of course, this is like one of my all-time favorites. This is the Annunciation, and here you have Archangel Gabriel coming, and you have Mary, and you have the UFO from the lenticular cloud shooting down the dove, the Holy Spirit, into Mary's crown chakra, imbuing her with the Christ to come. Of course, you know, I don't know what a fundamentalist would say about this, but this is basically 600 years old, and it's beautiful, wonderful work of art. And exactly the type of thing that the Vatican would try to hide. Um, again, another, a little bit more evidence for the reality of the fact that, you know, we're not alone, guys. Of course they exist. And they, they've they been on Earth. And there are some beings that have probably been on Earth before we were as well. Perhaps the Nagas. So my friends, as always, like, share, subscribe. I hope you do join us over on Patreon and Ko-Fi and make sure that you have subscribed to the second channel as well, uh, EE Arts. As always, my friends, keep your eyes to the skies. Be prepared. God bless and namaste.